Oh, man, I'm excited to see you guys. Thank you for uh, talking to me. You obviously have high hopes for this episode. Yeah, I think this is going to be your best episode ever. Whoa. Why is that? Yeah. All right, well, Katie is Katie Perry. So, there you go. <laughs> what? Yeah, go ahead and laugh about it. You want me to That's the Katie that you Come were on. talking about in your email? That's right. Hey. 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 What's up? Tell us how this whole relationship with Bow Wow uh, started. Okay. I was like bored one day on Facebook. And I'm like, okay, why not hit him up? I was like, hey, I'm a big fan. Love your work. Great job. Keep it going. And he was just out of nowhere and replied. And I was just like, oh my God. Ah! So I just gave him my number and he actually ended up calling me. I couldn't breathe. I was just like, are you Bow Wow? Are you Bow Wow? And he's just like, yeah, this is me. <laughs> and so I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm in love with you. But it's scary to say I'm in love with somebody that I don't see like that. So I got like a wall that's not breaking down. Normally, if someone wrote me an email that said they were having an online relationship with a celebrity, I would assume it was fake. But this guy started sending you money. Yeah. That's why I was like, okay, it is him. Who in their right mind would send somebody this amount of money and they haven't seen me? And you've never video chatted? It was always a bad connection. Or like when I tried to call him like, hey, why didn't you guide me? He'll just give me a little story like, I gotta do something, I'll get back with you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound that promising. How much do you really believe that it's Bow Wow? I'm like a 60%. I just want proof it's you because if it is Bow Wow, it's just like, oh my God, dream come true, fairy tale. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, bro? Uh, <laughs> um. Well, oh. I came here obviously to introduce you to Kiana. Oh my god. Well, how you doing, Kiana? Oh my god. <laughs> my name D. Oh um, <laughs> like Ari. Uh, You go by D. Yeah, my stage name is D Pimpin. How old are you? 23. And I never lied about my true feelings for you. I just lied about the person and uh, for that attention. That was it. Like the music, I'm me, I'm real, I'm this person. Like I care about you. I'm not. Oh. I just wish we could move forward from the situation. I'm not gay, so like this couldn't move forward. I'm kind of embarrassed at the same time because now, like, you're embarrassed, I'm embarrassed, you're... I knew you wasn't going to accept the fact that I was a female. I knew you wasn't going to accept that. Even if we can't share, like, a, you know, that type of relationship, I still want to be that friend to help you. I still want to be that person to be there for you like I've been doing, sending you everything, taking care of you and your daughter, supporting your career and all. Like, I want to be that person to help you with everything. Were you expecting this to go any better? Yeah. I was hoping like that we could have moved forward from it. Like, I don't even understand, like, we didn't even have to go through all this. Like, we wouldn't have been dating, but you could have been told me. Like, I think that's the most upset. Like, you got me looking stupid. So did you start the fan page? Uh mm huh. -hmm. And then that got closed, or you closed it? Yeah, or? I closed it. Once I got close to Kiana, I just closed it. So you kind of created the profile as a trap, in a way, to meet girls? Yeah, to meet girls, to meet a lot of girls. Because I know Bow Wow, he gets that attention. Like, all the girls love him. But those are straight girls that yeah. like Bow Wow. Yeah, I mean, for me, I like a challenge. I'm the type, I like a challenge. I like straight girls to see what I can do. Eventually, I was going to tell them. Now, I didn't say it not now. You didn't think anything was going to go wrong when you met them in person, they saw you were a girl, they, they'd just immediately, like, jump in bed with you? Yeah. 
when you came out of the door there, I, I thought you were a guy. I appear like, to most girls, a lot of girls to appear, appear to be a guy. And, and the money. Yeah, the I money. I mean, like, it's a lot of money. Yeah, I wouldn't just send random chicks that amount of money. Obviously, I had some type of connection, some type of feelings for her to send her money like that. And you are a musician. Mm -hmm. That's your full-time job? Mm -hmm. I do shows and everything in here. Here in Atlanta, like, they have open mics, so I do shows here for like $1,000, $300, $500. And... So wait, who was I on the phone with? It was my cousin. Oh, so she wasn't even talking to you? Yeah. Yeah, I know it's frustrating right now, but I just hope we can move past I it. I can't even cuss you out right now. How I'm feeling right now, like, I might just stop talking to you. That's what you really want to do? Yeah, how I'm feeling right now, yeah. What do we got? Ooh, catfish casting. Oh, oh from man. casting. That means something's up. Hey guys, you should check out this video. Maybe you can help. The oh hell? boy. What is this video? Andrea Russett. Wait, I, I know I her. This. She's a YouTuber. Yeah, I follow her on Twitter. So before this video of craziness, uh, she's got three and a half million followers. That's a lot. Who am I to try and stop believing? Wait, what is she talking she's about? Let's see. I'm sure you guys are already aware, there's been literally thousands of profiles using my pictures online. And a lot of them, I kind of just brush it off because they're ridiculous. They can't even spell my name right. They're saying crazy things. But I recently found some profiles imitating my family. And I just feel like once you involve my family, it's kind of just taking it too far. So I'm here to ask you guys, how do I handle this? Leave a comment below. Wow, it's got almost 40,000 likes and hundreds of comments. A lot of people tagging me and you. Her fan base is calling us. We've this. been summoned. The fans have spoken. This is a crowdsourced episode of Catfish. Well, I guess we should get in touch with her. All I right. think I follow her, and I I follow she follows her. me. So I'll message her. All right. Hey, Andrea. Just saw your post. We would love to help. Hit me up on Skype. Okay, now we wait. Part of the contract right. of being a celebrity is that you become public and people can do things with your image. Right. But you do not f with people's family. No, that's not cool. She must know the account, who the, which account. Oh, oh here she is. Wow, that, that was, was fast. Really fast. Hey, hey. Andrea. Andrea. Hello. What's up? How are you? I'm good. So how long have you had your YouTube channel? Um, I started YouTube in like, Sixth grade, so like 2009. Thank you very much for the 5,000 plus subscribers. How old does that make you now? I'll be 21 next month. Oh, oh wow. wow. I feel good. And when did you start developing kind of your following and fame? In 2009, because I had one video go viral. And then from that, I worked at my radio station in my hometown, Fort Wayne, Indiana, which like helped grow the YouTube stuff. And is that where you are now? No, I live in LA now. So. Okay, nice. Yeah. So for the last five years, you've known sort of internet fame and I'm sure all of the wonderful things and all of the sort of weird, creepy things that come with that. Definitely. I've pretty much been seeing people use photos of me as profiles since 2010. I mean, I've seen them profiles asking people to send them nudes. I've gotten emails from people that think they're engaged to me. Wow. These people have been sending them money, like crazy, crazy stuff. For my family, I just feel like it makes me worry more and it just concerns me a lot. How many different accounts are there? There's me and my mom, my dad, my sister, and my brother. Are they talking to each other? Yeah, they'll like each other's photos, they'll comment. So there's a conspiracy. For sure. When did the accounts get made? My sister's account goes back to 2013. Whoa, but you only just now saw it? Yeah. Wow, that's creepy. I've had some really scary run-ins with people, like stalkers, so it makes me worry more for my family but if it really gets out of control. Hi, Zoe, right? Yeah. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Neve. How you doing? Why don't you come on out? Some people I'm sure you recognize. Yeah. Can I start by saying um, to you especially, like I'm really sorry for using your pictures, not only of you, but like of your family. It was never anything personal. At the time I was being really selfish. 
like, that's the best excuse I can say. You didn't stop to think, like, maybe this is a really bad idea? It did cross my mind, but like I said, I was being selfish and I didn't care. So you didn't stop to think about the multiple people that you were messing with? You didn't think about any of that? Wasn't ever to seriously be vindictive or anything like that. That's not what I wanted to do. But that is what you did. It is what I did, but that was never my intention. Well, like, what I'm, was your intention? Yeah. To find something that I didn't have, put on a mask and be able to connect with people. And how and why did you choose Andrea? Honestly, I Googled pretty Tumblr girl and she popped up and I was like, okay. But then like people would bring it to my attention like, oh, this account's fake. Why aren't people tagging you? Why don't you have family members? So I decided to create other profiles so people wouldn't, you know, suspect. You said you didn't want to be vindictive, but like I've seen the things you said to other people. Yeah. It wasn't like polite all the time. I understand, yeah. So that's pretty vindictive to say stuff like that and to manipulate people. Yeah, I know. We picked Alex out of a hat. Are we to understand that he's the only person that you had an emotional relationship with as Andrea or as any one of these fake profiles? Emotionally, yes, but I did talk to other people. How many? I honestly, maybe three other people. Three other guys that you were flirtatious with and who thought uh -huh. that they were moving towards some kind of a relationship with And are with somewhere Andrea. out there thinking they talk to me and thinking that I'm this person that you portrayed me to be that I'm probably not. Yeah. I've heard you when you're sincere. This doesn't seem sincere. Here's the thing. It was I, never... You know me well. Yeah. You know me very well at this point, and you know that I'm a caring person in general, and I like to help people, and you know that. And I you know. had every opportunity to turn that around and just say, hey, I'm gonna be honest with you because you're a really good person, and I like, I'd like to show you that I am too. I agree. It was really wrong. I'm sincerely sorry, but that's what happened. I can't change it, but I am sorry. Hey! What up? Hi. We just saw your intense video submission. Yeah, why was it so intense? You, you were racing through it. I don't know, maybe it was because like my friend was filming it and she was just like making faces in the behind, in the background. So tell us about yourself. I used to go to school at Youngstown State, and now I'm just like working like crazy now. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 19. OK, so you're young. All right, so we want to know how you and Brandon met and sort of tell us the whole story of the last six months. Um, so after like a failed relationship that I was in, I decided to join Tinder. I saw his picture, and I was the one that swiped right on him. He also swiped right on me. After two days, that's when he reached out and said, you'd make a great girlfriend. And I don't know, I don't know where my head was. I was like, who, me? And so then he was like, duh. And I said, oh, OK. Hold on, time out. The first message he sent you was you'd make a good girlfriend? Yeah. I mean, it's a weird thing to say. Why are you buying okay. this? Why, why would you? You're well, smart Because he's internet famous. Well, all right, so sorry. When did you find out he was it. internet famous? And what kind of fame does he have? I looked him up. And I found him on like a website called like Famous People Birthdays, and they like told me everything about him. Got it. So I said, "Am I missing something?" And you're like, "Internet famous or something?" So then he was like, "Yeah, I make vines and videos." Is he hot? Is he hot? <laughs> yeah, he like blonde hair, blue eyes, and he's like super tall, and so I'm really like attracted to that. And he was someone like I could really talk to. <laughs> My past relationships have all been fails, and it's always me coming second to another female in all of the relationships. And this time, I don't know, he just made me feel like I was number one. Like, have you guys talked on the phone? We've spoken once. And what was that like? Well, I was telling my twin sisters about the whole situation. So she was like, girl, he's catfishing. You just, just, you know, leave it alone. I was like, no, he isn't. Watch. So I gave him a call or whatever, and I, like, let him know, like, hey, I'm telling people about us, and this is what they're thinking. So then he flipped out, got really pissed at me, and said, your sister's an idiot, I'm real, like this and that. So we stopped talking for a short period of time, and then he came back. After that, we just continued, like, talking. He's 
this joke. Are you for real? This Do you know this guy? Yeah, I'm one of my exes. That you said still liked you, but yeah. What's your name again? Thomas. 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 No, like no. This no, this is not for me. Like no, like all this time wasted. I I wanted to do it without another camera to save all this. I didn't want to do it in front of everybody else. But you know how I felt about you, and I know how we ended. I didn't, you know, feel it was right to come to you as me. And I tried to tell you before it got to this point, but it's kind of hard to do that. You played me back to back to back. And then, oh, when I finally move on, then you decide, oh, OK, I want her back. Like, where the f was that attitude back when I had feelings for you? So you guys dated in high school, right? My when you were 15, and it wasn't the best relationship. And then you broke up, and at some point you decided you wanted her back. Right. So you made the Tinder account. Right. And then just swiped looking for her? Pretty much, How'd yeah. you know she was on Tinder? One of my boys was like, oh, your ex on Tinder. OK. Did you, you got a new phone? Yes. And when I went to college, I got a new number. OK. Who's Brandon? I have no idea. It was somewhere I randomly like just looked up online. So the Brennan Instagram, the Brennan Facebook, yeah, those are not yours. Doing me. So there is a real Brennan yes. who presumably runs those accounts. But you don't know him, you've never talked to him. Right. Okay. Why did you choose that guy? When we were together, she talked about like kind of her image of what she would be attracted to. A tall white blonde guy? Yeah. You knew that that was kind of what she was looking for. Yes. So I went on Google and you know just typed random tall white blonde hair guy. And that was the first picture that came up. Okay. And what about that guy that we talked to, Matt? Matt. Who? Do you know that guy? Uh, no, that's Matt. He must oh, know the real. He knows Brandon. the real, but he's like, yeah, that's my friend. So there is a real. Right. Brandon. So that's a real guy. Right. Wow. So what was the end game here? What What was the plan? I mean, hopefully, you know, she realized that I went through all this for her and that my feelings are real, and hopefully we could work something out. Why should she give you another chance? Because um, I learned from my mistakes, you know. I, I realized, you know, where I messed up at. Back when we were trying, you know, you could give two whether or not I breathed or not. Let's, let's be real here. Back then, you know, yeah, I did mess up, and I did take you for granted. But when we were talking, I mean, the feelings were still real. We were still having a real conversation, and you just thought it was somebody else. It's not high school anymore. This is not how you get somebody back. Like, come on now. That's it. Like, I'm done talking right now. Whoa. But hold on a second. I recognize that. Yeah. Name. Paris Roxanne. Hi, Neven Max. I don't know if you remember me. You guys contacted me about a year or so ago when a catfish named Jasmine used my pictures on her fake profile. I think I remember. I remember that for sure. Yeah. Now everybody's using her pictures. Right. She wanted you to see this. My name is Paris, and I'm not but that was not my first experience with a catfish. If you remember, I was caught up in a catfishing scheme where I ended up dating who I thought was Chris Anderson, the professional basketball player, also known as Birdman. It all started in 2012 when I liked a picture that I thought was Chris. Chris was a star player for the Denver Nuggets, and I was a big fan of his. So I was pretty excited when I got his friend request. We were texting constantly. And we even exchanged some, how do I say, naughty pictures? I actually flew to meet Chris Anderson in person, and we had a great weekend together. But after I went home, things started to get weird. Okay, so hold on a second. So I started getting threatening texts from who I thought was Chris, and then they posted my naked photos on the internet. I was freaking out. Now, confession time. I told Chris that I was 18. I was actually 17. So when I tell my mom, she flipped and called the cops. We start today with that developing story. Investigators seizing computers from the Larkspur home of Chris Birdman Anderson. This is being called an internet crimes against children investigation. Chris was under investigation for child pornography. Breaking news on the DenverChannel.com involving the Nuggets Chris the Birdman Anderson. It was all over the news and it looked bad. We know he's not expected to suit up tonight. He was kicked off the Nuggets, and his reputation was ruined. The Nuggets issued a statement saying Chris has been excused from all
all team-related activities. But as the police kept investigating, they discovered the crazy truth. I thought I was texting with Chris, and Chris thought he was texting with me. But turns out we were both being catfished by a woman in Canada named Shelly Chartier. Chris Anderson, the basketball player, was talking to Paris Roxanne, but what they neither of them realized was that all of their communications were going through this woman. Shelly had created fake profiles and phone numbers for both of us, and all of our messages were really going through her. Shelly was the one that posted my underage photos. Shelly also pretended to be my mother and threatened to make Chris's relationship with me public unless he paid Shelly thousands of dollars, which Chris did. Shelly got caught and went to jail. Normally, you don't go to jail for tapping, right. but she was like blackmailing. Right. Well, guess what? What? She just got out of jail. And I want to make sure that she doesn't put anyone else through what I had to suffer through. Oh. Come on. Hey, what's up? What's up? How you doing? How you doing? Neve. I'm Rob. Rob? Rob. Hey, what's up? Hungry. Sorry? Hungry. Hungry. <laughs> Hi, Shelly. Yeah. Hi, I'm Max. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Why did you do it? I know you've said bored, but what, I guess I want to push a little further and ask, were you doing it because it was fun to do? Were you doing it because it was something to do? I think that that's a big part of this. I did it to see if she would believe me at first. And then I did it if he would believe me. And then, I don't know. It just, I kept doing it. And I don't know why I did that. I'm stupid. I'm really stupid. I, uh... I don't know, my whole time in jail, I thought, I kept thinking of what would happen to Chris and Paris and why. I don't know, I kept thinking, why the hell did I message her? I blamed her for the first few months in jail. Like, I really hated her. I blamed the cops, I blamed the judge, I blamed my lawyer. But I realized that I can only blame me. And then when I got out, people kept asking me, do you think about it? Have you thought about it? Do you think about it? Just like I'm asking you mm -hmm. now. And it's annoying. Very. People won't let it go, and I can't move on. And in jail, it's all I thought about. You know, everybody sees me as a villain. Do you feel like it's fair that people think you're... I honestly feel like it doesn't matter what people think about me anymore because I don't have the right for people to feel sorry for me. I... did a lot of and I'm not gonna ask for pity from people. What about the people who say you haven't yet served your time in the United States for the crimes you committed there? I think I did my time. A year is a lot to waste out of a human life. And those people should look at themselves and and think of the biggest mistake in their life and wonder, should I be punished more for what I did? So let's just assume all of this does blow over and go away. Like, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? Have a kid. I want to have this kid. Do you ever, like, kind of keep an eye out? Like, you know, you're like, you want to make sure that she doesn't of course, I, of if she, because if she gets in trouble again, then I have to deal with not being with her for another year and stuff like that. I never wanted to get in trouble again. I just wanted to set her on the right path. So it's safe to say <sighs> you're never going to catfish again? Yeah, definitely not. Hey! Hey! Hey, so what's up, guys? How hey, you doing? Spencer, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm excited to see you guys. Thank you for uh, talking to me. You obviously have high hopes for this episode. Yeah, I think this is going to be your best episode ever. Whoa. Why is that? Yeah. All right, well, Katie is Katie Perry. So 
There you go. <laughs> what? Yeah, go ahead and laugh about it. Your meter. Key. That's the Katie that you Come were on. talking about in your email? That's right. That's a wild claim to be making. Wait, time out. Is she not like with someone else now? I think she is dating somebody, yes. Who? Uh, I think it's the elf from The Lord of the Rings. Orlando Bloom? That's right. And what, if anything, gives you the impression that you are actually talking to Katy Perry? Because I've been talking to her for six years. And just the millions and millions of details. Little stories, like when she's growing up, that only Katy would know. Okay. But you, but you, <laughs> you understand how, like... It's one of the most ridiculous things we've probably ever heard. Yeah, I haven't told anybody, obviously. Okay. But we met on this goofy little app and you could interact with other people on it. She was on there, I was on there at the same time. Her name on there was Katy Perry. I messaged her, hi, are you the singer? Must be her. It was immediate connection, a million I love yous back and forth. It was pretty cool. Katie got to the point of really wanting to go all in with me and have me completely attached to her, I guess. But then she quickly killed that idea probably about two weeks after that. She deleted the Yahoo Messenger. She didn't tell me why. Later in an email, she said that she had sent a message explaining everything, but I never got the message and she never resent it. So I would like to, you know, be face to face and see if there's a future here. All right, Spencer, level with us for a second. On the scale of one to 10, 10 being I fully believe I'm in a virtual relationship with Katy Perry, and one being this could be true, but probably isn't, but I thought it would be a good episode of Catfish. Where, where do you fall on that scale? Like a thousand. Have you spoken to her on the phone? I have, one time. One time. And it was $270 because she had a phone from Canada. Why does Katy Perry have a phone from Canada? She was on tour in Canada at the time. It made total sense. Spencer, nothing would make me happier than bringing you to meet Katy Perry, but, I mean, it's a real stretch. Would you like to find out with me? I mean, yeah, sure. Let's yeah, find out. As so long as you understand that, like, I'm usually the one who tries to remain hopeful and think that there's maybe a chance, I'm going to abandon that role on this episode. Man, this is going to make it even more sweet when it's her. OK, great. <laughs> Hello. Harriet, I presume. Yeah. Neve, how are you? Hi. Hi, I'm Max. Hi, Max. I'm Harriet. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hi, I'm Harriet. Spencer. Spencer. Hi. Yeah, Amy told me you guys were here. So, you know. So you've been talking to Spencer for the last six years? I have. You don't know Katy Perry? No. <laughs> Anything to say to me? No, <laughs> I'm sorry, I guess. It's not the kind of thing you guess you're sorry about. No, I mean, yeah. It seems like no. a, an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive me, but did, is there anything about this situation that you find humorous? No. I don't think it's, like, funny. He said that you had to be Katie because you knew so much about her life and all these details. I, well, I was like a really big fan of her, so it was kind of stuff I knew from being a fan. I was checking everything. Well, yeah, I kind of just was kind of really yeah. Six years of yeah. Googling Katie, where she's at, what she's doing, what she likes. Well, it was kind of me, though. Six years, like, this is the first time us meeting. I feel like more excitement, maybe, more. You would feel it. From she, her, right. towards me. Where did we meet again? On the app. Oh. Yeah. Who else could it be? I mean, really, Katie. You can't possibly think it's still Katy Perry. I do. OK, so, whoa. 